Good afternoon, everyone. I would like to welcome all the attendees of this session. It's now time to introduce the speaker of the day, Mr. Anup Sharma, Head Operation and IT, Mittal School of Business. Anup Sharma is an IIM Ahmedabad graduate, currently serving as an assistant professor in Mittal School of Business, lovely profession university since 2017. He has 10 years of experience in industry and academics. He is heading operations and IT domains and take care of business analytics at graduate and postgraduate level. His research interest is in the field of operation efficiencies, application of advanced IT and AI tools and wealth management. He has a book to his name in addition to multiple research paper in Scopus, journals and UGC Care. He is well equipped with the knowledge of multiple program and visualization tool, including R, Python, VBA, and Power BI. Let me welcome Vishal Kaushik, sir. He is an ex AVP for TCS supply chain and also glo global program manager for Agilent Technologies. He did his engineering from III Mumbai and MBA from. IMT. He has a vast experience of more than 28 years of 28 years. Currently, he is started his own startup and is also a partner for Siku. Now, I would also welcome Mr. Pankaj Witch, head department of TIEPS, Division of Admissions, Lovely Profession University. He holds a master's degree in management with the keen area of interest being training and development. He is having over 18 years of experience in multiple domains, including teaching, training, and operations. He has occupied strategic position in multiple organization. He is taking up the eligibility scholarship fee structure and infrastructure part of the university. Now, I would like to hand over things to Mr. Anup Sharma, and it will be absolutely delight to listen to him. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, for this opportunity. I would also like uh, to thank entire team to give me this chance to interact with the students and uh, share things about my program, a program uh, for which we are very proud of. And this program is uh, MBA in Logistics and Supply Chain. So uh, myself, Anup, and uh, I've joined this organization like uh, past seven years. And over seven years, we have seen a lot of growth in this program. And we have transformed this program to, uh, from a very basic program to you know, requirement of industry. And as per requirements of industry, this program is designed. So I would take you through these slides to just uh, tell, us, uh, tell you about this program. So the first thing which I would like to highlight is uh, about the school or the college, uh, which is Middle School of Business. Uh, uh, and this program is uh, part of this uh, Middle School of Business. Uh, the first thing is, this was introduced in 2001. And uh, we started with management, uh, commerce, and economics uh, areas. Further to that, uh, if we talk about rankings, we do have very high rankings uh, in NIRF. And along with it, uh, Times Higher Education also ranked us uh, very high, uh, very high. We are in a group of 500 to 600 batch. Uh, Shimago Institute ratings, uh, we uh, were ranked 14 uh, in 2023. And talking about accreditations, as of now, our school is accredited to uh, ACBSP uh, USA. So this is uh, these are a few of the things. In addition to that, there are more than uh, 25 programs which are running in uh, this school. And one of this program is MBA in logistics and supply chain. Uh, we have uh, students uh, from entire, uh, entire country and not only from this country, but from uh, abroad. So we have uh, somewhere around uh, 4,800 students uh, across the country. And if I talk about diversity uh, across countries, then we have students coming from 29 countries. Uh, faculties. Uh, we have uh, different uh, different uh, levels of faculties here. We have faculties coming uh, with uh, vast uh, experience in industry, uh, uh, faculties uh, who have PhD degree with them, and they have a uh, wide knowledge and they have experience of sharing wide knowledge uh, across uh, uh, education industry. 
So uh, talking about uh, uh, what we are uh, doing in this supply chain uh, and logistics program, we are trying to uh, you know, uh, meet demand of industry. We are trying to create, uh, you know, we are trying to deliver things which can enhance the skills of students so that they can meet demand of industry. So these are top 10 skills which were listed. Uh, and in this set of skills, we can see that uh, critical thinking and active learning are ranked very high. And our program focuses on these two aspects along with technology usage. So we do pay emphasis on technology. We try to implement uh, you know, different, uh, different tools uh, wherever we can, uh, whichever are used in industry. We would try to uh, you know, give a content to students where uh, they would be addressing complex uh, situations, uh, things which are actually uh, happening in industry. We bring it on table in front of students and they do uh, solve those problems. So we, we make them experts uh, in solving those problems. Uh, so what is required is we want to train all students taking this course. We want to uh, make them digital ready uh, so that you know, they can cope up with the requirement of this industry. So what is basically required is a good mindset and for the rest of the things, we are sitting here. Now talking about uh, tie up for this program, uh, uh, we have uh, this program uh, tie up with the uh, Safe Educate. So basically this program is slightly different from different, uh, other programs offered under MBA stream. Uh, this program is specialized MBA uh, where we have tie up with Safe Educate. And uh, Safe Educate is a uh, sister concern of uh, Safe Express. Uh, Safe Educate looks after uh, you know, profile, white collar job profiles. Whereas if we uh, uh, talk about uh, CECO, then CECO uh, uh, is into the digital part and uh, the education wing, uh, which delivers you know, advanced uh, courses to institutes like uh, LPU. So if we talk about uh, uh, this particular program, uh, it's a specialized MBA again. Uh, we deliver 12 different courses, and these courses are entirely delivered by industry experts. Uh, talking about assessment, assessment is done through externals, uh, externals coming from industry. Uh, additional internship opportunities are also provided to students. And uh, talking about uh, field project, which is part of curriculum, uh, these field projects are also, you know, opportunities are provided uh, in logistics and supply chain companies. So what do we uh, do in classes? Uh, we, we try to enhance teaching experience using multiple tools. Some of the popular tools which we use quite often is uh, simulations. Uh, we give options of MOOC also, uh, that is so that, you know, uh, students can actually um, uh, go through the content, uh, practice things, and then come well prepared in class. Uh, we do have case studies uh, directly coming from industry. So my partner would be discussing after my uh, slides. So uh, we have case studies. I hope so. Uh, they should. Uh, their roles, and then they would take a decision out of it. Uh, if I talk about uh, scenario playing, then we would um, you know, create some scenarios where a uh, teacher would be a mediator and uh, students would be you know, uh, participating. So these are all activities uh, in which students are engaged. Now, what I would do is uh, I would just uh, ask uh, uh, my uh, colleague, uh, Mr. Kaushik, uh, to tell us more about uh, CICO platform. Uh, how they are engaging students in classroom and beyond classroom. And then towards the end, uh, uh, I would discuss a few more points related to the program. Uh, Kaushik sir, uh, over to you, please. Thank you. Thank you, Noob sir. So hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Vishal Kaushik. Uh, uh, if you can just go to the next slide, please. So just a very quick brief about me. So uh, I'm into industry from more than 28 years with work experience in various uh, uh, organizations, which include uh, LG Electronics, which is consumer durable, 
uh, Agilent Technologies, which is into the engineering, uh, test and measurement equipment and life cycle equipment. And then TCS, uh, I was uh, heading the supply chain vertical. Uh, basically, I've done my BE from IIIE Mumbai and then uh, MBA from IMT Ghazibad along with that. It's a continuous learning. So I've uh, also done my Six Sigma Black Belt from American Society of Quality. And uh, that's about me. Uh, and I manage various roles, uh, uh, including uh, delivery operations, uh, global program, project management, and uh, procurement. And I'm the partner of SECO. And that's where the, the, uh, the differentiator, which I'm going to talk today with all of you. Uh, okay, so very, very quick uh, intro to our key pillars from the SECO team, which includes uh, Mr. Arihant, Ajit Kushwa, Yasho, Divya, and uh, Saurabh also, and how the foundation laid out uh, to bridge this gap of uh, academia versus the industry. So this is the team uh, which make it happen. Okay, so let me take a step back and we we'll definitely can go to the next slide, which is the skill-based approach. And what does it mean actually? In a very simplified term, uh, this talks about uh, what we, each one of us has gone through from our childhood to what we have learned uh, during our schools and colleges. And when we get into the real uh, uh, environment of organization, so do we really get a knee-jerk action or do we really get very uh, uh, along with it? So this is what uh, is the gap which we have seen and uh, at uh, uh, organizations as well as colleges. And that's where the need has arrived, how we can bridge that gap for, uh, with the students and they feel the part of organization from day one, they are quite employable and they understand the requirements of businesses uh, moving from the strong foundation of academics and getting the scenarios understanding of industry. So this entire pedagogy is, you can put it into simple three buckets, which is the industry oriented learning, personalized learning, and then applied learning. So this is well-crafted playbook which I'm going to talk about in a few next slides also. So how, uh, where we need to understand from the domain part, then to the industry requirement, basis that uh, where the, our subject matter experts who created the curriculum and uh, organize the classroom versus the uh, offline trainings also, and then uh, go for the next level of personalized learning because we are into the era where the things are very dynamic. Every day we are learning, irrespective of uh, our experiences or the levels. Each one of us has to learn. So personalized learning is going to be the core for uh, each student versus everyone. And then how you can apply those learning in those scenarios. So that is where the uh, SECO, we have provided the sprints, the projects, the industry tools, internship, and the OJTs, which is on-job trainings. So this is the entire high level uh, pedagogy. Okay, so how do we uh, understand what is the gap uh, where the academics play a major role building the foundation for students and to understand the concepts uh, in a detailed way. And then what is the requirement of uh, uh, any industry or the company? So, uh, to understand that, and it is very scientifically driven, if we take up a JD, job description for any role, then we can see various requirement and we convert back to analyze, map it to the student CV, curriculum vitae, and see what is there and what's not there. So now it is entirely artificial algorithm, which uh, gives that kind of a gap and bases that gap what data we got, how we can bridge those skills, what is needed for that role for a particular student or the group of students and make that delta to zero. So JD versus the CV, that's how. So maybe the next slide, I'll just uh, uh, give it more. So just, just an example on a high level. So job description talks about the, uh, the 
uh, not only the technical aspect of a domain, but also the behavior aspect. Because uh, in real world, how you are going to solve the problems, like Anuj sir has mentioned, the skill set is not only about the concept, but also about how you are going to manage the problems along with the people around you as peers, as seniors, and how that can happen. So the JD gives the what is the requirement of a role, whether it's a specifically requirement of uh, the supply chain skills, the procurement, the sourcing, inventory management, versus how you are going to work with respect to the communication, the quality and the relationship interconnectivity of various organization. So this JD and then the comparison of a CV, which brings the extract this information and put it into the whole aspect, which is the requirement in terms of tools, core skills, and then soft skills and the industry knowledge. So the later two parts make it uh, very effective for students to uh, make them very strong fitment for the, any role going forward. So this is a larger taxonomy with respect to the JD, how we can see and categorize in. So uh, just to simplify this slide, it is how the soft skills uh, plays a role versus the tools and the SCM knowledge, which is required. So basic requirement comes with the uh, knowledge of a specific subject, whether it's the procurement or sourcing, logistics management. Now, master data management plays a very key role because we are getting into the digital era uh, in detail and how we are going to put that's the foundation with respect to our soft skills and the interpersonal skills and organization requirement, which is uh, a key aspect to uh, penetrate through your project and make it successful with respect to the understanding of the tools also. So this is a, a complete taxonomy in uh, where we extract everything from SQL algorithm and then put it into different buckets very clearly and then map it. Okay. So from there now, so far we talked about the requirement of, uh, of uh, uh, I'll say the institutions and then the organization and how a student will get in, involved or integrated uh, with respect to this. So on very high level, it is uh, uh, now each one of us seen, we have gone through various uh, uh, challenges in economic environment and we understand the need of an R is to work in hybrid mode whether uh, how we can manage the company or the or the, i'll say uh, the function whether these are challenges which has come like covid or any war in any uh, country how the supply chain are key enablers to survive so here what we are talking about is into the digital versus the physical requirement and that gives us the uh, practice in terms when we venture into a specific organization. So the, to start with like onboarding, the profile creation, the psychometrics and domain quizzes, and then uh, which is online and then getting into the classes mode where we get the feel and the discussion and entire brainstorming of the requirement from an, any organization perspective and learn the key. In the year one, we are talking about skill ass assessment, supplementary learning, and then the feedback happens on one-on-one -on -one basis and the group-to-group -group basis. And once that goes through, then it goes through towards a sprint, which is nothing but the projects uh, we are talking about and uh, coupled with the industrial tools. So unless we see what is there in industry, we can correlate to our subjects, what we have learned or learning in during these years and then we put back into uh, our action mode also related to those projects as per the company's uh, point of view from their uh, lenses and try to relate to the concepts. And how this algorithm of SECO, it really rank everything to the talent board. It is how the specific student are good in which skills and wherever there is a gap, how we can uh, align to learn or enhance our skill onto that side, which is coupled with the internship. And then through the internship, we uh, definitely talk about the online courses 
uh, like the your yourself you know you need to learn and then build build it once th this particular internship happened then you have to see in your resume where is my strength and what i am looking for with respect to my skill assessment and where my uh, synergies lies with the company's roles and the requirement so this is an entire uh, high level uh, i'll say the journey uh, which goes hand in hand uh, with respect to the industry requirement versus what we learned Okay, so this is uh, like I talk about uh, on the previous slide. So the entire uh, pedagogy, which is now breakdown into the simplified version of the soft skills versus the tools and how these are, uh, you can see through the color combinations uh, in semester one, uh, how we have to start on the journey uh, with combination of soft skills plus the conceptual uh, topics of supply chain, which is basis the score model. You can, there's a source and the procurement and then a make, which is talk about the manufacturing and then the order management, which is nothing but the logistics and then the after uh, market, which is sales and warranty. So entire four buckets we have uh, categorized. So this goes in every semester. So semester one, then it is ranked and the data captured for each student and then goes to the semester two and then uh, go, got into the app, everything goes and analyzed. Then every semester followed by a uh, input of information about a student so that that data is analyzed and provided a real timely feedback, not at the end of a year of the or a specific entire course. So this is a very online, uh, uh, I will say the active learning, which I have seen in couple of organizations are doing it. But uh, this is not a pedagogy which every organization, and that's where the link got break. So uh, Seekos platform gave us this attributed with the uh, respect to the students and make it a more standardized way to analyze our skills and what is needed. Uh, okay, so just to give a... Uh, on a illustrative uh, high level understanding about a student, uh, for example, the skill set we are talking about in terms of supply chain analytics or the supply chain planning, sourcing management, procurement management, inventory. And then the softer aspect is communication skills and interpersonal skills. And then we are talking about the uh, tools part, which is, for example, we have taken as Excel as a tool or ERP could be a tool. And what are the skills needed for a specific job role? So supply chain analytics, beginner is okay, but supply chain, chain planning is needed at an intermediate level, while the sourcing management is needed at an advanced level. So this is a specific uh, view of a specific job description. And then basis a student, what skill set is matched are uh, mentioned as ticked mark while the other skill uh, currently the uh, student is not having and he or she need to build on it. So basis on that, if you see on towards the right hand side, how he or she is uh, doing with respect to the comparison within that class uh, in terms of all these aspects of uh, core domain, uh, then interpersonal, uh, I'll say the behavior part and the tool parts. So where the class median lies as compared to that specific student. And how the feedback mechanism go in all these aspects, uh, if you see uh, uh, graph to graph, uh, where the person is excelling and where the person need to catch up. So this gives the entire view for the specific role. If somebody is looking for, I would like to start my career, I'm good in really uh, analysis and negotiations. So how and where else I need to put my effort where I can clear my, I'll say the interview rounds or uh, through tests and other aspects. So he or she can understand where the person is excelling and where he and she can go for further kind of uh, requirement and do that analysis and take the courses. Okay. So uh, this is one of the talent board, uh, which I'll just uh, talk through from our SQL uh, algorithm uh, platform based, where uh, just a glimpse that a specific person uh, 
uh, the rank, uh, and this is not a rank of a person all through. This is with respect to a specific uh, uh, job requirement. So maybe a person, say Ravi, for example, or Sonal, for example, maybe Ravi is scoring 41.7 for a specific job description, uh, while Sonal uh, has uh, gained a good score with respect to that specific, say, sourcing manager or the sourcing engineer role or the assistant role. Uh, but maybe for planning, Ravi may score more because this is a very active, dynamic uh, talent dashboard, which is linked to various job description and the score keep on changing based on the skill of a person and what is need to be done. So education, uh, work experience and the behavior skills are linked to analyze and then the person can relate to it. Uh, so this is a talent board across. Okay, so just on a very uh, high level, I'll uh, talk about that. This is how uh, our, uh, uh, I'll say the output, because we are outcome-based organization and how we see our, the ultimate objective is uh, uh, team to come up and get through all the interviews, 100% uh, placements, and that's the ambitious, uh, every realistic goal also. So these are a couple of our students where we got uh, them placed in a, a good organization, as you've seen, GEP, American Express, HUL, uh, and Saket got phone pay, and uh, Rohit Khera, uh, various, uh, I'll skip to the part of LPAs because this keep on varying. The more I emphasize on the skill set, because uh, there's no uh, limit, you, you can touch the sky. And these, uh, this is the trainer where we have all our subject matter experts who are uh, industry oriented, having uh, uh, high uh, numbers years of relevant experience and uh, the kind of hours they have already put in uh, for uh, trainings and put in for creation of content, mentored in numerous number of projects and the students and where uh, the multiple industry connects, uh, including Arpit, Mayang, Priya, Milan, to say a uh, few of them are highlighting some of our trainers. Okay, so I understand this is the glimpse um, and just some pictures, but it says uh, a thousand words because picture really gives and uh, when I talk about from the industry perspective, I can see our Anoops are also in left of the picture. So uh, when you get into the real shoe, then you can really see how long you can walk. So it is like that. It is just not you get in front of uh, the screens or the books, and then you are ready uh, to you know win the battle. Uh, yes, you understand. But until you practice it, you cannot feel it. So everything has to be, uh, goes hand into hand and validate what I have learned or what I have seen, whether it goes the requirement, you will come across thousand of questions, but you will get uh, 10,000 of answers with sim simple visits also. So we a lot emphasize on industrial connects, industrial visits, which gives the high level and the requirement understanding how people interact within an organization, how people behave in an organization. There's no knee-jerk action that I am responsible only up to what? Because they are very simple questions people get apprehensions about, like students get apprehensive about, but when they visit, lot of clarity comes to uh, uh, their mind and their uh, understanding. So right now, uh, just to share, and I'm we're proud that we are working with the, uh, all these uh, customers and organization uh, where we are uh, working and imparting and guiding because this is a social cause as we all of know. Uh, we are, as Indians, I'm really proud across globally, uh, we are known for our intellect. And if you know for uh, that matter, uh, most of the big organization, Fortune 50 or Fortune 100 organization, those are led by Indians. So, uh, so this is what it is. And we are uh, uh, ensuring more out of it because uh, I 
have managed in my uh, tenure with TCS for more than 2,500 people uh, globally. And I see the differentiator between uh, our uh, way of thinking and how we serve the customer, uh, whether it is a manufacturing organization or the life science organization, or whether it's an e-commerce organization. And we understand their need much better than anyone else. So this is what uh, on the slide. And uh, I would like to thank you. And I'm open for any discussion, question. Anup, sir, over to you, please. Right, sir. Thank you very much. So uh, this present. Um, this presentation was basically to uh, you know tell our students that what all things we are doing with industry partner but there are many things which are uh, you know it's a very short time to discuss everything in detail but uh, you know, through presentation uh, there are a few more things which i would like to highlight uh, before we move on to q and a round uh, the first thing is uh, this program is very unique reason being uh, this type the roles which students get those roles are very specific to an industry where knowledge can be imparted only by uh, that industry experts. So if I talk about the entire curriculum, there are a lot of courses, you know, courses in um, finance, maybe in marketing and different areas. But if we talk about you know, the core subjects, uh, the domain knowledge that is delivered by industry experts. So that makes this program a very unique program. First, second thing which I would like to highlight is uh, the way we, uh, you know, the way we coordinate to deliver best thing to students. So the thing here is, uh, like uh, whenever we have uh, students with us every year, we would take their feedback. Uh, we would talk to industry in terms of, you know, wherever students are placed and how they are performing, whether their performance is good or bad, or whatever inputs are missing, you know, what skills are missing, and based on that. We do interact with each other, you know, uh, each other means, you know, uh, LPU and CECO or CFA uh, Educate. We would, we would discuss with each other and would try to identify, you know, what skills we need to upgrade. So that makes our program, you know, very, another, another thing is like, because it's uh, revising every year, even, uh, you know, with, uh, between year, if you feel something really is important, you would include it. So for an example, I would like to just quote an example here, which is very, very interesting example. We devised our entire curriculum, uh, you know, for students, we, we uh, divided our roles into two broad cohorts. These two cohorts are, uh, you know, linked with uh, analytical profiles and uh, profiles where students uh, go to B2B type of roles. No, these are not only the roles where students can go, but still uh, these are two type of roles where students can get very high packages. So the uh, so entire curriculum, entire pedagogy, the way we deliver things, the content which we use in the class, entire thing was uh, you know uh, re-engineered uh, to make it suitable for each of the cohort. So uh, this is how we we change our curriculum regularly. This is how we keep our curriculum relevant to industry, and uh, we try to you know include trainers across you know different companies you know with their vast experience. So, for example, uh, if I have to, you know, uh, deliver a course uh, related to, let's say, ERP, then I would ask someone who is uh, really practicing it in industry rather than, uh, you know, a teacher who would just teach from textbook. So, uh, I think these are the things which make this program very unique and very different the way it is delivered in LPU. So this is uh, uh, from my side, uh, but uh, ma'am, uh, we are open for question uh, questions. So awesome. if our participants have any questions, uh, we would like uh, we would love to answer those questions. Done, sir. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Anup sir and pa uh, Vishal sir for your guidance. So we have some few questions from our students. So our first question is for uh, Anup sir. What is additional internship benefits? Okay, uh, so when I talk about uh, internship opportunity through uh, Safe Educate, uh, see basically college is giving one set of opportunity to all students. So whoever is registered in uh, you know placement, they would be getting opportunities. But uh, we have tie up in industry, 
and uh, you know they 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 know companies they and they have you know people across different companies so we give additional opportunities to students which are uh, you know uh, which are not offered by college so student gets dual benefit you know they get opportunity through college as well as through our industry partner okay. and that is actually complimentary so our industry partners happily give that opportunity to students yes. so uh, i can see another question from sonali so it goes to anoop sir again how industry coordinator gets better lecture content uh i didn't get it what do you want to know ma'am how industry coordinator gets better lecture content okay okay industry coordination you are talking about see ma'am uh, as i told you that uh, you know um, i am not the one or you know um, my teachers would not be teaching all subjects right so uh, when i say uh, i have to go with the uh, let's say uh, procurement related subject right so procurement supply chain no what i would do is uh, i would ask someone who is actually practicing it um i would also see that what type of roles students might get uh, with this uh, you know uh, where the subject might help and what exactly they are asking uh, in terms of uh, knowledge in procurement no our curriculum the subject the topics which we would teach in this subject those topics would be entirely based on this feedback and you know um you know the points which you collect from uh, industry so our curriculum would be designed based on that including the pedagogy including the pedagogy so if i say uh, someone has to actually you know work on excel to uh, give a solution then our assignments and our classroom teaching would be such that students would actually be using excel to give a solution there so that's how we do it so i can say another question okay uh, it's again for the anup sir okay how do you decide right trainer for subjects interesting question <laughs> uh see uh it's not like uh, we just say ki give us some trainers for the subject uh, rather than that there is a profile check which is done so i uh, so my bosses and you know self we would sit uh, and you know check all the profiles shared with us and uh, we would also you know give them requirements like what are expectation of students in terms of uh, uh, content in terms of uh, pedagogy uh whether uh, someone is uh, you know uh, someone can deliver those practical experiences to students uh we do take uh, interviews and uh, conduct dummy classes uh with those trainers to ensure that uh those trainers are uh, you know they can do good in the class and it's not only the selection process but uh, we do keep check uh, during our regular classes also so we do inspections sometimes surprise inspections sometimes uh, camera inspections uh, but uh, yes do we, we do keep check on that and if we feel that uh, you know something is lacking uh, we coordinate with the safe educate team and you know we have this mutual agreement that you know if teaching quality is not as per requirement uh, you know we should change uh, our trainer so you know they are very prompt into that uh, i want to appreciate that part from safe educate side also so the, till now i have not faced any issue in terms of trainers uh, whether you know it, uh, if it's about some improvements also whatever is communicated to them uh, those improvements i can see from very next class so i i see that's how you know the right trainer plays important role for such content delivery man that's how we do it and our last question is for vishal sir how can you relate your experience with education and supply chain sector ah okay very interesting uh, one uh, see i'll give you two examples to it i'll try to answer that question so uh, okay i did my mba in uh, operations materials management and i have gone through the entire uh, uh the content and assessments and everything but when i got into then one of the organization uh, uh so i'm talking about the procurement role uh so i uh, and i compared it in two different organization where there was a direct material procurement and in another organization later where i used to head the procurement it was a process manufacturing industry so in direct material how you can save the money for an organization that's the one of the uh, core objective of procurement 
and the saving can happen with various levers and uh, through uh, you know our academics i understood okay this is the negotiation skills how you can negotiate another aspect and then that's the way you can save it uh, with different suppliers you can uh, share the business and all that but when we get into that so those are the first year you can do savings but what about the next year what about the third year fourth year then you get into the concept of value engineering how you can think about the product where we can have the uh, uh, see the value of a feature requirement or you really need the requirement of a customer or for that product for example air conditioner or what it is then if you need those uh, quality if it is required by customer then okay otherwise how you can manage without uh, that with the same uh, reducing the cost of the product so then you get into the real industry nuances and understood. So that's where the industry uh, understanding comes into play. Similarly, for example, in the process organization, I talk about uh, uh, the procurement part of a process industry. Uh, okay, you uh, chemical industry, right? You, you, you buy the raw material of chemical, get it into the intermediate uh, countries, process it, and then deliver it to one of the... Uh, plants saying in Germany or Europe like that. But when you really get into that, how you can save money because those are the uh, various mode of transportation, the ships, the barges, and the uh, uh, containers, how you choose how you effectively get the size that whether it is what are the students and they can relate the concepts uh, how uh, the our academics foundation versus what the industry requirements are so students i think your doubts are clear if you still have any doubts or any queries you can just text in the chat box so i will and then i will try to address them and now I will request Pankaj with sir to be on screen. Over to you, sir. Very well. Thank you. I guess my screen is visible to all. Yes, sir. Great. Right, so what we witnessed uh, for the past about 40, 45 minutes is a lethal combination of the industry and the academy interface. We at LPU sincerely believe in that particular thing to bridge the gap between the industry and uh, academia. And that's what we are doing right now in this broadcast as well. Mr. Anoop and uh, Mr. Vishal Kaushik produced uh, uh, some of the finest information that they we can do about supply chain management. Well, uh, students, let's uh, shift the topic a little bit. And uh, I would like to tell you something as to what exactly you can expect when you join the university, that is when you come to LPU, academia and uh, industry, we have already talked about, but a little something about what you can expect when you come to the university, when you join LPU, these are the things you can expect to get once you join us. First and foremost, any, any university you join or any college you join, the first and foremost thing that you need to know about that particular college is the kind of uh, accreditations and approvals that the university has. To start off with, I would like to share our approvals, our set of approvals and accreditations that we have got under our belt. Uh, first and foremost, it'll be the NAC A++ accreditation that we have got uh, with a whooping score of 3.68 out of a uh, uh, scale of four which is the highest among the first cycle of accreditation amongst all government and private universities. So that's that's a feather in our cap. Uh, moving on to some other approvals, we have got, uh, yes, we have got NAC, we have got Accreditation Council for Business Schools and Programs. This is, the, uh, this is something which is relevant to the topic today. Then we have got approvals from the ICAR, that is Indian Council for Agriculture Research. We have got approvals from University Grants Commission of India, which is both for regular and distance programs. 
Yes, we have got approvals from NCTE, which is National Council for Teacher Education, which encompasses education programs such as BED, MED, and so on and so forth. Moreover, we have got approvals from uh, the PCI, which stands for the Pharmacy Council of India, Council of Architecture, Bar Council of India, which deals with the law programs. Of course, Institute of Town Planners, which is the planning program, physiotherapy, and uh, the Punjab's Council of Agriculture Education, which once again deals with the agriculture program. So these are the gambit of uh, uh, programs. Uh, these, are the, uh, the, these are the approvals that we have got. Similarly, we have got memberships. We are the member of uh, the prestigious AICTE, AIU, and some other that you're seeing on your screen. Moving on, placements. We have discussed uh, something about placements in, in the session till now, but let me tell you something more about the placements. These are our flag bearers who have brought laurels to the university by bagging uh, salary packages as high as, as high as three crores or uh, multiple lakhs, like 64 lakhs, 49 lakhs, 48 lakhs. And they have uh, been picked up by industry, industry giants such as uh, 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 Google and so on and so forth. So, so these are the people which who we are really proud of and they have brought laurels to the university, they have brought laurels to themselves, to their family and obviously to the nation as well. This is our one crore club. You can see the people have been picked all over the world with the likes of Google, Yahoo, Amazon and so on and so forth. Well, uh, Talking about extracurricular activities, well, extracurricular activities, it is, it's a very old saying that goes that all work, no play makes Jack a dull boy. So if you, uh, if you, if you are into uh, education, that is obviously very good, but education is incomplete with, without extracurricular activities. To add a few things into this particular thing, I'd like to tell all of uh, the viewers over here that uh, we were runner-ups in the, in the recently concluded Kalo India University Games. And uh, the likes of Neera Chopra, Bajrang Punia, Manpreet Singh, the former captain of the Indian hockey team, uh, which won the bronze medal uh, in, in the Tokyo Olympics. These are all our students. So you can understand the kind of uh, emphasis that we give on extracurricular activities, including sports events, cultural events, and so on and so forth. Well, the year was uh, 2019 and we hosted the 106th edition of the once again prestigious Indian Science Congress. It was inaugurated by none other than uh, uh, the Honorable Prime Minister of India, uh, Sri Narendra Modi ji. So this is the kind of exposure that we like to give our students. His Holiness the Lai Lama has been over here in one of the convocation ceremonies. The two former presidents of India and Afghanistan sharing the same stage, giving away degrees in one, uh, one another convocation ceremony. Former finance minister of uh, India, late uh, Sri Arun Jaitliji was here some years back. He, he inaugurated a startup school. Well, well, that's very relevant to the management people. Uh, Venkaiya Naiduji in 2018 was here giving away degrees in yet another convocation ceremony. And uh, uh, quite recently on the 25th, we, we hosted uh, uh, the, this year's convocation ceremony, which was uh, attended by uh, Mr. Tony Abbott, who was uh, who was the former Prime Minister of Australia. So this is another thing we have done quite recently. Gohar Gopal Das was here uh, of uh, some some time back, giving away life sermons to the teachers, to the to the parents, to the students. And of course, these people also come to the campus, not only to sing and dance, but also to interact with our students because these people are, are the, the real heroes, but they're, uh, they are the real life heroes of our young generation. So this is the kind of exposure that we believe in giving our students. Well, talking about infrastructure, education, once again, another very important vertical of education is the infrastructure. What you're seeing right now is a marvel of a building, 14 blocks joined back to back, housing the central library of the university. Well, that's our auditorium, capacity 2,500 people in a single go. Uh, these are the kind of uh, laboratories that we have. What you're seeing right now is, is uh, the computer lab that we have got, and we have got a whole lot of them. It's an automated library that we have got. Every department has its own library, but this is the central library that you're seeing right now over here. And it's a completely automated library that we have got. At the, at the helm of uh, the things, we have got uh, uh, at the epicenter of the 600, 600 acre, acre campus, we have got a, a, a mall. Let's go inside the mall. These are the interiors of the mall. You've got provident stores. You've got uh, places where you can purchase your stuff. 
uh, fully equipped uh, gymnasium with international trainers, bowling alleys, recreational facilities, ample lot of them. God forbid any student falls ill, but if somebody falls ill, we are ready. We have got a 25 better hospital within the university, which caters to the health needs of our students. Uh, that's the open air theater. We generate our own electricity, part of it, solar, solar panels that you can see on top of it. That's a panoramic view of the university. It's a very lush green university that we have got. Some time back, we were awarded as uh, one of the cleanest campuses in India, amongst the top 10 cleanest campuses in India. And uh, uh, sporting facility, since we have produced one of the, some of the finest sportsmen in India, uh, let me take you around the sporting facility that we boast. We've got uh, the indoor sports complex. Uh, we have got uh, swimming pools, all weather swimming pools that we have got. We've got shooting ranges. You name a court, you get it. Badminton, basketball, volleyball, and so on and so forth. We've even got a squash court. So that's, that's an aerial view of uh, the sports facility that we have got at LPU. Uh, we are once again have... Uh, the hostel facility, which is uh, in uh, ample numbers, and uh, more than 22,000 people put up in the hostel facility that we have got uh, with us. One more thing which I must tell you, the, the students who are watching this broadcast, they are MBA aspirants, so we have got something uh, in store for MBA aspirants as well, which is something which is called as a study grant. It's a very, very unique thing. And uh, uh, we at LPU run... Uh, uh, a national level test, which is called as LPU NEST, Lovely Professional University National Entrance and Scholarship Test. So without giving a test, you cannot take admission with us. I will I will discuss the eligibility criteria as well. But say, uh, there's a student who says, I want to, uh, I want to pursue my uh, MBA from IIM. That's pretty good. That's, per that's perfectly all right. But we would suggest such students to appear for our LPU NEST exam, because if you do so, and you are amongst the top 100 people uh, ranked in that particular exam, that is LPU NEST, that's our R exam. And uh, you also happen to crack CAT and you enter into any MBA college that's that's through, uh, that's uh, IAM. So you join an IAM and you have also cleared our LPU NEST exam with good marks, standing amongst the top 100 students. So to study in the IAM, if you select to go to IAM, then we at LPU will fund you, will grant you, will grant you one lakh rupees as a study grant to study in IAM. So you're not studying with us, you're studying in IAM, but still we are uh, uh, facilitating one lakh rupees to you because you're the cream of India, because you're going to an IAM and that's pretty good. That's with we are, we are very uh, we we would be facilitating one lakh rupees as a study grant. In the previous uh, years, we have uh, given as many as six crore rupees in this study grant, and which ranges across various subjects. So that's another thing that we uh, do to facilitate people who really do good in uh, their life. So. Moving on, the last section of my presentation, I will take. I would like to take. Uh, uh, the students live on our website in order to know the eligibility criteria of the program that was in discussion right now. So allow me to share my screen once again. Just give me a moment, please. Right, I hope my screen is visible. I think it is visible to everyone. Right, okay. So I'm on lpu.in, that's our official website. I go to the admissions section over here and uh, MBA of obviously would be after graduation program. So I go to regular programs in after uh, graduation programs, just click it to over here and uh, it will show me an area of uh, disciplines that we are offering after graduation, that is for post-graduation. As soon as I'm on my next page, I will just select the relevant uh, discipline, which happens to be management. And uh, then I'll take you further and uh, let you know about the eligibility and some other aspects about uh, the program that was in discussion. So all you need to do is go to lpu.in. In lpu.in, you have to go to after graduation programs. And in after graduation programs, just give me a moment. Uh, it's just loading up. Just give me a moment. So it'll show you uh, the array of programs that we are offering after graduation. Should be there in a moment. Fine, right. Just give me a moment. 
eight. Technical glitches are, have, are bound to happen then when they are least required to happen. So I guess, uh, let me try it once again. Maybe it's trying to increase the curiosity of our students. <laughs> <laughs> Still learning. So, well, this is, this is the location where you can go and you can select the discipline of your own choice. And uh, once you get this particular thing, you can go to the management programs and in management programs, you can check uh, out the- I eligibility. think- uh... I think they need to select graduation here. No, I've selected it, but it's, it's it's not showing. I guess so there, there's some- The thumb, page some, is not opening. The page right is now. not loading. I'm I'm selecting the uh, qualification criteria, but I guess something is, uh, uh, something is going wrong. Anyhow, uh, not an issue. So you just go to lpu.in and select the, uh, the, the uh, after graduation programs and uh, in which you select the regular programs and the next, section should show you the uh, the various disciplines but some somehow it's not showing right now and in which you'll get to know about the yeah it's not loading properly so i uh, guess some something wrong with it but anyhow not a problem so you can just go to this particular place and you'll get to know about uh, the details and uh, I can tell you something more that you can take down these numbers if th that thing is not loading right now due to some uh, maybe uh, network issues, something. You can obviously take down our numbers. You can call our uh, representatives that are our admission counselors and the counselors who are from academics. They will guide you for different programs the way you have been done right now by Mr. Vishal and uh, Mr. Anup regarding the, the supply chain management program. Our numbers are 1824-517-000 or uh, 1824-0184-4044-04. And you can always write to us on admissions at lpu.co.in in order to get to know about uh, the various details of the program. So, uh, well, the things did not load over there. That was uh, something which is- uh, try pure. one more. Anyhow. Uh, yeah. I guess that's all from my side. I hope the information was handy for all the students. Back to you, ma'am. Thank you so much, Pankaj, sir, for your guidance. Right. Thank you, ma'am. Experts, your ear of research, your depth of understanding the topic, and your ability to pr present the topic in such an interesting way produce one of the most wonderful afternoon for all the attendees. On the behalf of all the attendees, this webinar, I would like to thank you for your insightful presentation. Hopefully, the attendees found this webinar to be valuable and will be able to utilize the information provided in this webinar to help take a better decision regarding your admission. I'm obliged and once again thankful to Mr. Anup, Mr. Vishal and Mr. Pankaj for strengthening this platform. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much.